Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT where we're going to take a look at the main screen when you boot up APT we just had a couple of minor changes for version 4.40 so let's get into it okay so here we are with APT running in simulator mode um, I've got it running with a plan going and everything else at the moment so that's all good um, and we'll just have a general look around this main screen. This is what you'll get when you open up, uh, except you won't have a plan running, of course. Uh, in the center is your main screen. Um, this is your preview window, whether it's uh, an image you're looking at that you've taken previously through the imaging tab, um, or it's one you're taking live now, or the last one you took, or if it might be one that um, you're using for live view, it will show up in here as well and that's just the main screen there um, you will notice a small square up in the corner here um, that's something I failed to mention in the last version of this I did what that does is it pops up on the even number of images uh, and disappears on the odd number and that's just to let you know if you're doing something you might not be dithering or something it just lets you know when an image has changed and that's all that is there so that's one there um, right at the top here you've got your live view or image preview which is the title for this one and it tells you whether you're using a one-to-one -one or a uh, fit preview so at the moment I'm using fit preview if I double click on it it goes out to one-to-one -one and you'll see the title changes up there but that's all that is um, now I'm going to take a quick look at the status panel on the left here um, just the differences between what you get on a DSLR and a CCD and CMOS camera um, up the top they are all the same everything there uh, the power for your PC is across the top here so if you're running a laptop off a battery it'll tell you how much battery life you've got left I've got a mini PC connected to a power supply so it's coming up as AC okay that's when things changes for the next two lines with a CCD or CMOS camera connected uh, the next line is the power being consumed by your or how much power you're using from your cooler uh, so it might say 66 percent might say 100 percent 48 percent it's just how much power it's drawing from its maximum and directly under that is the temperature of your sensor so that's what you get with a CCD and CMOS while on a DSLR you get the battery life remaining on your DSLR if you're running off a battery um, or if you're running off a dummy battery it will actually say AC here if you're using a dummy battery so that's just what that one is and the next line will be how much space is left on the card in your camera so that's the, that's the only difference between the two of them everything else is the same um, so your filter if you're using one uh, the number of images in your currently selected image folder um, in, in the imaging tab uh, PhD2 state at the moment it's saying C because I've connected to PhD2 but as you'll see when I go back because I'm running the simulator of that uh, it'll have figures here and what's that showing you is how far in pixels the guide star is from being centered um, under that I'll go through that in a minute the, this new square here that's one of the new features that have been added then you have your sky quality meter uh, readings if you have one or if you set a manual one uh, and your darkness clock uh, with your moon phase indicator and the meridian flip clock but that's what you've got there um, so I'll go back in and we can see what else is going on on that one so as you see I'm on filter green uh, images is in the current folders 29 my PhD 2 state uh, as long as that doesn't get over one you're not doing too bad um, so I'm quite happy with there because it's only a simulator anyway now this scrolling box you hear here you have is the new one and what it does is it shows you your deep sky darkness time left uh, your narrow band time left and then you've got something else based on a new your current air mass which is where your scopes pointing does that and the air mass limit uh, how soon before you reach it and that's a new setting in your location tab in settings which I'll go through in another video but for this to work properly you need to have your air mass limit and your location correctly set so it can knows what's going on now with the sky quality meter uh, if you have one connected the reading will be here but you can double click on it and you can actually set your manual one 
uh, a manual reading if you like um, it's up to you I don't bother with that I'm hoping to get a sky quality meter later on to use but not right now and that's it. so that's it for the status panel on the left oh two things I haven't mentioned you'll see up the top here the little FC and the little AMF now the FC is based on focus craft uh, if you have focus craft set to calculate in every image you'll see the FC up there uh, if you don't use it uh, simply when you uncheck it that disappears okay so that's what that little one means now for the AMF if it's flashing your AMF is going to work again that's in section craft uh, so I've got it turned on if I turn it off it disappears turn it on yes I'm fine you get your AMF back so that's just to let you know you are using auto, auto meridian flip that's all that is uh, down the bottom is the um, log file uh, your log window I'll just quickly nip into that uh, where are we over here and that's just a simple log of things that are happening it's not a lot you need details on um, it's nowhere near what's contained in the actual log file for the program just what a user um, might want to see information they might want to have uh, at the top right hand side of that you have data craft you have the USB monitor and the new feature here is access to APT settings which means you don't have to go to the tool tabs to get in your settings though you can always use the shortcut anyway so that's not going to make much difference now rather than going back I'll just switch to the next one I've got here and this is across the top of your uh, main screen you'll have the APT version number as you can see I'm using the pre-release 4.34 and hoping Ivo and Maria don't change the main screen settings before uh, 4.4 comes out in the next couple of days hopefully uh, what profile you're using if you have it set in your uh, location you can display your location up here as well um, I've already mentioned the live view and image preview title up here then you have live view clicking this button will turn live view on uh, and off and the zoom plus and minus that's for your EOS cameras your DSLRs to zoom in and zoom out uh, plus to go five times and ten times on the Canon and zoom back out again uh, then you have your target and object size uh, button here I will show that in a second uh, the shoot button takes a single shot based on the settings you have in the bottom of the camera tab um, now across the top here you have your temperature if you have a sensor connected um, generally if you have a focuser connected with the sensor uh, just the temperature will be just, uh, displayed up here but if you have a supported uh, sensor of another type uh, there are ones that just humidity and dew point and that will be displayed across the top here as well so you'll have temperature humidity and dew point then you have the date and time of course as you see I took this in the middle of the afternoon <laughs> um, then you have three buttons here uh, sound on and off uh, I turns your tool tips on and off and the question mark opens the user guide or if you hover over it with tooltips turned on it will show you the shortcut keys then you have your minimize maximize and close ones the standard windows uh, buttons up there and the access to your various tabs uh, summary camera gear tools and imaging tab so that's what you've got in there and really that's all there is to the main window uh, as I said you've got your crosshairs the straight crosshairs there um, the circle which shows you the size of the object on your sensor or turn it off now that circle will only come up if there is a size set in the object size here whether you get that from the object browser when you set the object or whether it comes from you manually entering it in that box but that's it uh, I don't think there's much else to show in here uh, as you can see that's how the time runs up the top here uh, the number of images on the total number of images what it's actually doing so I'm on an exposure at 81 seconds about 15 minutes to go to complete this plan and it should finish about 1.18 my time uh, I'll hopefully be in bed by then and as you can see the new box here just scrolls up and down or up and up to let you know what's going on and that's it um, nothing else to really say on this at the moment because all these tabs and everything else will be covered in uh, other videos 
the darkness clock will be covered in another video same with data craft usb monitor and of course the settings so i'll leave this one here for now wish you all clear skies and i will talk to you in another video take care everyone and uh, if i don't talk beforehand have a good christmas